this car is for sale at Sussex Classics in Crawley Down. Check out the link to their website down below and thank you to those guys for letting me uh, drive it today. If you haven't already hit like and subscribe on this channel, then please do consider doing it. It makes a massive difference to the channel. Thank you. In 1962, British Motor Corporation's amalgamated drawing office revealed their 16th project, or the BMC ADO 16. But as the world knew it, the Austin 1100. This is not an Austin 1100, kinda. What you're looking at is possibly the most badge engineered car ever built, probably. This is a Woolsey 1100. In the early 60s, as BMC had swallowed up a large proportion of the major players in the British motor industry, Austin Morris, uh, Riley, Woolsey for naming but four, a new badge engineered single platform to cover all the major brands was needed. So Izzy Gonis was given the task of designing this new project. But in 1962, the Austin and Morris were revealed. But this basic body shell with their own unique Austin and Morris faces to give them that look, the Austin being the more working man basic version, at the time of launch, the Riley 1.5 slash Wolsey 1.5, the little small, cute, round, cuddly car from the previous generation, was still selling really well. So they decided to keep pushing that one out in the market to differentiate things just a little bit longer. So it wasn't until 1965 that this car came onto market with its new Wolsey front grille, Wolsey headlights, Wolsey bumper, Wolsey overriders, and more importantly, Wolsey leather and wood. It's quite clever how with just changing the bonnet and the grille and the front panels, you completely change the character of the car. Now under here we have the same 1098cc as you'll find in the rest of the ADO 16 range. Except here we've got twin 1.5 inch SU carburettors, so you get more lively performance and a smoother running engine, more power for a more refined customer. I say more power, it's still only 55 horsepower and 61 foot pounds of torque, so it's not earth shattering levels of performance here. But it is still an A-series, which makes it very easy to work on, and any Morris Austin BMC garage could take care of it for you. And if you're a home mechanic these days, servicing and maintaining one of these is an absolute doddle. Like the other cars in the ADO 16 range, you have the little winglet flying buttress, um, yeah, yeah, pointy American style wings, or American influenced wings, but on a much less grand scale. And a reasonably good boot, which I'll come to in a second. And of course, a nice center exit exhaust as well. Now we do have the luxury of a button, a lockable button obviously, and a fairly sizeable boot. I don't believe it goes back, yeah, not too far, I and mean, you'd struggle to get a body in there, but you'd just about manage it. Um, the seats don't fold down, so if they've got rigor mortis already, you're gonna struggle with that. Um, but it's quite a wide boot, and it's quite a deep lengthwise. It's not very tall though, but you probably get a few suitcases and you get a week shopping in, that's no problem. Um, you do have the intrusion of this metal pipe from the fuel filler, which is in no way even attempted to be disguised amusingly, and also the, um, the filler air vent as well, going straight through your luggage compartment. That ordinarily on a car today, that would be quite well hidden. Under the floor, slightly hard to lift. You do have a full-size spare wheel. I say full-size, it's only 12, it's only 12 inch steel, so it's not taking a lot of space up. And you have an SU electric fuel pump. Uh, I'm actually not sure if that would be original or not to have the electric pump in there if it would have been a manual pump originally. Um, but yeah, we do have a, a toolkit in there as well, a jack and everything. And it does give you a certain amount more, more storage space if you were to cram a few more odds and sods down here as well. Ah, as you sink into the luxurious Wolsey leather seats, there's no creaking vinyl for you in your Austin or Morris. This is a leather clad Wolsey. The only creaking you're gonna get is from finest hide. I was talking to someone this morning explaining how I was gonna be driving a car, which is basically a larger, more advanced, more luxurious Mini. And they said, what, you mean like that wooden picket thing you drove the other day? And I thought, oh, do you know what? It actually is, isn't it? This is the, the basic Austin, but tarted up. So you sink into these deep blue leather seats, and honestly, there's not enough blue leather in the world. There needs to be more blue, brightly colored leather seats in cars, because the black, boring ones they do now are just so dreary. These are comfortable, they're not exactly bucket seats, they're more armchairs, if anything. There's no headrest and no facility to install a headrest either. However, you do have a big, thin-rimmed steering wheel. There's no power steering, so you need that big wheel. And beyond that, we have our dashboard. This is beautiful. This polished veneer wood is just delightful. It's a very 60s design. It's very kind of that 60s minimalist where brutalism meets art and design. The left-hand side of the dashboard is just one big glove box lid. 
and <laughs> astonishingly shallow dashboard actually hit behind that. It's only a hand depth there, barely a finger depth. This does fold down into quite a convincing T shelf because there's nothing without it open. No, no rings for cups, but you're only going to be using it static because this is very slippery. In the centre, so dividing the two halves of the dashboard, we have our little ashtray. And directly in front of me, seen through the steering wheel, there's just one neat little instrument dial. This is very reminiscent of a 2-litre Rover P6. A strip speedo in the centre, going up to 100. A temperature gauge on the left and a fuel gauge on the right. That's basically all you need and a mileometer below. There's not even a trip meter on the mileometer, which is interesting considering this is the luxurious version. You've only got three instruments, effectively three and a half instruments. You would expect maybe a, a tachometer or a resettable trip meter, not just an ultimate odometer showing the car. It's only done 32,000 miles. That's astonishing, really. No wonder it's in such good condition. To the right of our dance, we have a nice, neat square panel of nine circles. The top row is three lights, two ambers and a blue for headlight, main beam, choke, and indicators. Below that, we've got three more circles, two flippy switches either side for our lights and wipers, and the ignition key in the center. And below that, three more for a choke the ignition warning light, and a squirty button for the manual washers. Not electric, it's plunger powered, so the harder you push the button, the harder it squirts out at the window. This dash top is lovely, big, thick, padded thing with what looks like a speaker grill, but it doesn't actually have any holes in it because there's no radio in this car. So if there was a radio, you could fit the single speaker here in the top of the dashboard. But instead of having a radio, we've got a big, storage tray below the entire width of the, the dashboard, so side to side. Actually quite a useful size um, for odds and sods and bits and bobs. And speaking of storage, we even have door bins and both front doors. Quite big storage compartments. And of course, down the bottom we've got, well, this is actually quite a luxury to be perfectly honest. We do have the heater controls, off-screen car and temperature, max and min, a, a fan speed to give us some blowage and ventilation, because not every car, even in the early 60s, not every car was equipped with a heater and a blower, so that's quite nice. And because we're in a Woolsey, we have a lovely wooden gear knob with a Woolsey badge in the top of it, and a nice red, almost glowing pers plastic perspexy W in the steering wheel. It's also nice that we have quarter lights. It'll not windable like on, say, Rovers and Jaguars, but quarter lights nonetheless. There's a nice big spacious front. So let's have a look in the back. Uh, climbing in the back of this car is again quite spacious. Um, I didn't think it looked like there was a lot of space, but in fact, there really is. Um, my feet have got a room, there's big, big cutouts under the base of the seat. So even though I've got my big boots on, I can still get my toes under there and don't feel at all kind of claustrophobic or cramped. I've got good knee room, this front seat's set up for me and I'm 5'11". And I've got good headroom, even though the, the roof does kind of begin sloping away just behind my head, I've still got good room above me at the moment. This is very nice. Now there's nothing in here at all. We don't have opening quarter lights in the back doors, but we do have opening main windows. There are no seat belts, no door pockets, absolutely no cup holders. There is an ashtray um, down here. Um, ah, same as the one in the wooden picket where you can pull the top of this one. Um, and we have the back of the static seat belts for the front. There's one little light for the entire interior here above the, uh, the driver's seat. And that's your lot. And a nice big uh, parcel shelf, plenty of room for your travel suites. It's kind of not surprising people didn't want to use um, seatbelts at first because these old Kangol static things are a real pain to try and organise into any kind of uh, useful position. recreating the magic he had done in the form of the Mini with the next size up of car. And so he took that in hand and using a lot of the same clever, innovative technologies and a few more, he really went to town on this thing. So like the Mini, we've got a nice stiff chassis, which means that everything you know, rides well to start with. 
is use his hydroelastic suspension again. So we have this wonderful floating ride, which at the same time as being beautifully soft and uh, composed, means that when you hit a corner, you can actually have a bit of fun with it and the car will grip. As long as you've got decent tires on it, which luckily this one's got a set of new, new tires on, so. He also decided to put disc brakes on the front which is quite an innovation at a time when um, drum brakes all round was really the thing. And so having discs at the front was quite a luxury item, especially on a brand like an Austin. It also used this trick of using the transverse engine and gearbox to make much more space inside. Bear in mind this car is smaller than a Cortina of the same period, there's actually more space inside it. I mentioned this car was badge engineered and it was badge engineered up the wazoo, I mean seriously. As well as the ones that you know about, the Austin, the Morris, the Riley, the Wolsey. There was the Innocenti version, there was the Austin America version, for America obviously. In fact, there are so many I can't even remember, I can't even remember them all. I'm going to have to pull over and give you the list. It was built in two factories in Britain. It was built in Longbridge and in Cowley. It was CKD'd, as in complete knockdown kitted, to Malta and New Zealand. It was built in South Africa, Australia, Belgium, Italy and Spain. Hang on, there's a lay-by here. I'll give you all the different variants. So, in 1967, the 1300 came out, which is the 1275 version. And of course, they kept making the 1100 at the same time as well. So, what we ultimately had, and bear with me, the Austin 1100 and 1300 and the 1300 GT. We had the Austin America, the MG 1100, the MG 1275, and the MG 1300. The Morris 1100, the Morris 1300. The Riley Kestrel of various versions. The Vandenblatt Princess of various versions, 1100 and 1300. The Wolsey 1100 and the Wolsey 1300. Oh, my word. I think that's everything. Ultimately, they built 2.1 million ADO 16s, but only 44,000 of those were the Wolsey version. And today, there are about 21 left on the road, which is an astonishing decline. And although Azagonis did the engineering work on this car, the actual exterior for the entire ADO 16 family was actually drawn by Pininfarina. Now the controls on this thing are an absolute delight. The steering is not power assisted in any way, but it is very, very direct feel and not heavy at all. You are just totally connected with the, the car, even though it's got massive, massive rim. The pedals are slightly offset to your left, which is a little bit awkward, um, I guess because of the position of the steering column. And with these boots on, I do struggle to get the clutch all the way down. I have to try and work quite hard to remember to only put like, my big toe of my left foot onto the clutch, otherwise my foot bashes into other things, which is a little bit awkward. Looking around the car, there's lots of BMC parts bin items, uh, control knobs on the heater, the door handles and that kind of stuff, the mirrors. It's a genius bit of marketing to have four different cars in your range which are ultimately only the same car. Unfortunately, it does mean if one person or someone, unfortunately means if a customer doesn't like the basis of your car to start with, you're not gonna snag them with any level of any of your brands, unfortunately. Not only does this car have the indicators on the right-hand side, it has one of my favorite BMC features, which is the little glowing green um, light in the end of the indicator stalk, which is, BMW drivers and Audi drivers today would not forget to indicate if their stalk lit up every time they made a turn. Also glowing is the Wolsey logo on the um, front of the grill. When the lights go on, so does that little badge, which is unbelievably sweet. I love that. The gear selector, or the gear stick really, let's not be honest, and the gear shift is well placed. It's a really, really long stick but it does put it just right in the correct place for your hand. And it's quite a short throw gearbox as well. 
a little, slightly stiff linkage going through the gears. But a nice simple H pattern, so you're not going to get lost. It's a very comfortable car. The hydroelastic ride coupled with these nice deep leather seats and that wooden dash makes it all feel you know, really quite opulent. Unlike the Van den Plaar version, you don't get little wooden picnic tables in the back of the seats, but since you rarely sit there, it's only the kids are going to play with them and scratch them up with crayons. You do have the utterly pointless wing mirrors on the end of the wings deal going on again, which because this is quite a short wing, you can sort of see a bit of something now and then. You can't just about make out what's going on in them. twin carb effort does give you a little bit more of a turn of speed just makes it feel a bit more more peppy it may not be big numbers but it's only about 830 kilos I think um, in terms of weight of the car so it's not going to shift a great deal of a mass although despite that lack of mass 0 to 60 is still 18 seconds and top speed is 85 miles an hour so although the ADO 16 as a project ran from 1962 all the way to 1974, the Wolsey itself only went between 1965 and 1973. And it wasn't the last of the Wolseys though. That honour goes to the 1822, the Wedge, but that only carried its name as a Wolsey for seven months, after which it reverted to being an Austin and a car company which had existed since 1901 as part of the Vickers family was no more. Do you know what I really like this car? In a slightly sort of funny, fuddy-duddy kind of way, it's actually enormous fun and really nice to drive. I could see myself going for a car like this. I hope you've enjoyed this little trip into BMC's history with this Wolsey. And thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please hit like and subscribe. If you haven't, keep it to yourself. Sorry. I say sorry for the, uh, I say apologize and explain about the audio in the um, wooden picket video. The little radio mic I'm using has decided that it won't work beyond a couple of meters away from the camera. And it's got to go back to road to be investigated. Um, hopefully it's been okay today. I've kept closer to the camera to avoid that problem. 